Hey guys, this is another game where I played Tromposki Attack and something very interesting happened since I was able to play a Greek Gift Sacrifice. Watching games where there is a Greek Gift is essential to understand this attack pattern, since very often, even when the sack is winning, we need to find very specific but typical moves, and this is gonna help you get familiar with them. So let's get into the game, it was started Tuesday, I was playing as white versus a Fide Master. I played d4, my opponent played knight f6, and then, as you can imagine, bishop g5, one of my favorite openings as white. My opponent played e6 here, main line is knight e4, he played e6 this time, also very playable, and the best move for white here is e4. The main line for black in this position is h6, but my opponent played bishop e7. After h6, I could have played bishop takes knight, uh, queen takes bishop and knight f3. This position is very interesting, more or less equal, but I think it's very uh, dynamic and playable as white. My opponent played bishop e7, and here I played bishop takes knight. Now, this move is not really so strong, it's not the best in the position. I had the idea of removing the knight defender of the castle, in, but even when I won, probably because of this uh, idea, uh, also I wanted to play e5, bishop d3 later. Uh, I must admit this is not the best. The best move here is e5, and after knight e5 I can trade, and this position is going to be really good. I mean, knight takes bishop, we can even play f4, we have a lot of space, we have a very good bishop, we are playing knight f3, knight d2, queen e2 later, and probably castling either queen side or king side, but our position is just great. A lot of space, pawns covering dark squares, as my bishop covers light squares. So that position could be really good. In the game, I traded, bishop takes bishop, I developed my knight, he castled, and then this idea, e5, bishop e7, and bishop d3, and every piece is going to its exact place for the great gift. My opponent played d6, and at this point, I played the best move in the position. Actually, I was playing for a trick, but, well, this move is gonna create a threat that is very strong, and that's probably the reason why... Uh, is, is, is the best move in the position because it's hard to stop that threat. So the best move here is h4. And the idea here is that I could not play knight g5 previously, but after h4, I'm enabling this move. So now bishop h7 is playable, knight g5 is playable, and also queen h5 is going to be playable. So every piece is getting its place and uh, the the idea bishop a7 and the great gift sacrifice is actually a threat right now. It's not so easy for black to stop this. For example, a move like a6 is, I mean, it's actually stopping it, but the position is very good for white. I can just play queen e2, and there are ideas with queen e4, but also I'm just playing like knight d2, castle in queen side, and the attack can be very strong breaking over g5 later. So the position is, is very good even if he plays uh, this a6. Also, a um, the best move actually for black could be like d takes e5. This is a little surprising because how d takes e5 stops the Greek gift? Well, the idea is that the pawn is also very important on e5 in the Greek gift sacrifice. So if he takes here, there is no pawn on e5, and the Greek gift is not going to work. Another way to understand this move d takes e5 is by thinking if there is an attack on the side of the board, we need to react, we need to open the center, and that's what black is doing when they play d takes e5. For example, if I try the Greek gift now, uh, it's not going to work. I can just play knight g5 here, but they play king g6. After queen d3, they can just play f5. We don't have a pawn on e5 to capture on passant, so this position is just a normal position with a piece down. And I mean, we have some small initiative, but it's not enough compensation. Here I can play, for example, h5, and if they take the knight, they are receiving mate very soon, but they don't need to take the knight, they can just play king h6. And this is totally one for black, there's nothing here. And black just has a piece up here. So that was the best move for black, d takes e5. And it's actually the only move keeping an equal mid game. Instead of that, my opponent played c5. And this is, of course, a mistake. Here is why to move. And well, I guess you already know the move I will play, but if you want to analyze the lines, it's going to be very well. I was actually thinking for some seconds or maybe even one minute in a blitz game, that's a lot. But in the end I decided that 
I had to play the Greek gift. I mean, I have everything. I mean, the, the knight or the bishop cannot defend h7. The pawns are on the base. Uh, my bishop, my knight, and the queen can go to the squares, you know, h7, g5, and h5. And also I have the pawn on e5. So I was calculating a little. I saw some interesting lines over there, and I said, even when I did not calculate everything, I said, this is this has to work. So I played here, bishop takes a7, my opponent has to take the bishop, and then knight g5. And here there are like three moves. In general, when we play the great gift, there are three moves. Uh, king g8, king g6, and sometimes king a6, when the bishop, especially when the bishop is not on c1, that's, that's also an option for black. Well, king g8 is very, it's more or less easy. We just play queen h5, with a threatening mate over here, there's not too much that they can do. They can trade the, the knight, but then we capture with the h pawn. That was the whole point of the move h4. And well, that, now mate is, is going to be unstoppable. I mean, they can try f6, but trying to escape over here, but we don't need to give the check directly. We can just play g6 first, controlling f7, and mate is unstoppable. So king g8 is not going to work. Um, in the game, he played king h6, but also king g6 is an option. Here we need to play queen d3 check. It's the only move to keep the, the attack and the initiative here. Black can try f5. This is the only move for black, actually. And then we can capture e takes f6. Uh, king takes f6. We can give this check here on f3. And after king g6, we need to play this move h5. And this is going to be winning for, for white. I mean, if they go to h6, we just play knight f7. And that would be made uh, very soon on g6. But the main line here is when they capture um, the knight, and then we just play queen g3 check. And there's a nice line here. We are going to extract the king a lot, and we will have a, a nice mate. We can play here queen g6 check, and we continue extracting the king. Yeah, once the king is out like this, uh, we, we are winning probably in some ways. Here knight d2 is very strong, king g2, queen e4 check. And the only move for black is rook f3, and then we capture. And this is a nice checkmate, extracting black king. Well, after knight g5 in the game, he played king h6. But, well, um, at this point, I played queen d3. That's a typical move. That's a, a typical move in these positions, wanting to give mate over a7. Here, probably the only move black can try is g6. And here it is white to move. I found another strong idea is the only move to keep the attack going and actually it's the only move winning for white in this position i will say it very soon but it's good to try to find it because it's a typical move in this kind of positions the move white played here is this a strong h5 like this i'm opening the h file i'm opening the diagonal the attack is very serious now the attack keeps going well at this point well, my opponent played rook h8, which is bad. Now it's an easy win for white. But this this line, king g7, is very, very challenging. It's very interesting and it's still complicated. White can play only one move to win. White is winning, but only if they find knight takes f7, which is not so easy to find, but uh, it, it makes sense once you analyze it. That after rook takes f7, we can play uh, h takes g6. And now we open the file. And we're going to involve the rook, the pawn, and the queen in, in this strong attack. Uh, the lines are still a little tricky. Black can try here rook f4 with some ideas like rook h4. We give a check and we need to find here g3. Uh, it's, it's a key move in this line because if we don't play, black is playing rook h4, they are trading our rook and, and the attack is over. However, after g3, this is decisive advantage for white. The lines are complicated. We are not going to analyze all this. I just want to show you this idea. If he takes the pawn on d4, we can play queen f3. And we are mating here on f7. And even if black plays queen f8, our queen can go now to the h file. And this is going to help us a lot. Since we can play now rook h8 check. And when they capture, we can play queen h5. And then queen a7. So, well, uh, in the end, this uh, line with uh, king g7 is still winning. It's a little more complicated. We need to find some really accurate moves, but in the end, it could be winning just playing knight takes f7 and keep going uh, with that sequence. Well, uh, black played here rook h8, and this is just 
uh, winning for white, we can just play knight f7 check. We're getting the queen, but it's not only about the queen, it's also about g6. At this point, my opponent resigned, but the line could have continued like king g7, queen takes g6, king f8, knight takes rook. We are threatening checkmate. And, uh, well, queen e8, we can play queen a7. We are still threatening things over here. And of course, we are winning in, in many ways. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want to learn how to play Tromposki attack, check out this interesting eight minutes video. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Thank you so much, guys. Like, subscribe. See you on the next.